Okay, I'll start it now, but then I'll clap whenever. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so, how you guys doing? <laughs> doing great. great. <laughs> we are in the Holy Land. Yes, we are. This is amazing. This is a miracle. We're in Bethlehem, Palestine, and it's been like wild, <laughs> you know? So, why don't you share with me a little bit about your guys' story and um, your background. I know God did amazing things already while you're here. Mm -hmm. um, talk to me about what you said about coming here. Whenever you're on your way here, you, you shared with me about what you wanted God to do. Yes. Why don't you share a little bit more about that? Absolutely. So, in preparing to come to Israel for the last three years, for the last like 15 years of our lives, you know, we're like, we're going to go to Israel. That's where I'm going to get my miracle over my entire body. Wow. And, you know, every couple of years, there's been another element added to my body. But I knew, just like, you know, um, the woman with the issue of blood, I felt like I knew if I just came here and just walked where Jesus walked, and I know he can meet me wherever I'm at, but I just felt like I had to be here for my healing. And then, you know, all these things to come about to where we can't make it to Israel. You know, um, COVID and just uh, canceling and <clears throat> just life happening. I'm like, okay, Lord, you, I, maybe it's not, just not my time. Yeah. And just the week before we got here, there's so many barriers that happen in our lives. Um, but God told me I had to forgive yeah. before I came out here. Mm. And... There's two people that was in my mind and I didn't call them and that was obviously, you know, God just speaking to me and challenging me. They called me. These two people called me and I haven't talked to one of them for like a, lot, a long time. And the battlefield of my mind was like, I had the conversation already in my head, yeah. trying to forgive this person. And um, she calls me and I told her, this is what's on my heart. And she asked for forgiveness right away. Wow. And she's like, will you forgive me? And I'm like, yeah, I forgive you. And then immediately our conversations went as if nothing happened. Wow. It was an immediate forgiveness. But I felt like preparing up to that, my own mind was getting in the way. Wow. I already had the argument in my head that, uh, you know what, she's not going to forgive me or I'm not going to forgive her. She's going to make all these excuses. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And it was such a release. Wow, wow. So tell me a little bit more about the ailment. Because this is your guys' story and, and what God has done in your life for his glory. Yes. You know, um, tell us more about that because there's, there's so many people which are going to be watching this who have been struggling with so many things. I mean, um, I myself experienced healing in my life as well. But whenever I would watch people kind of share, that's kind of what built my faith sure. about really the ins and outs, the day-to-day, -day. like how was it and what was it? Yeah. So just give us a little bit more detail on that. So about, what, 15, 18 years ago, um, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And rheumatoid arthritis is just a swelling in your joints and it pretty much cripples you over the years. <clears throat> Excuse me. It cripples you to where you can't, your knees hurt so much. Um, it used to pain me to get out of bed. I used to stand in the shower for half an hour just so I could start moving my body. Um, and then I went to the doctor and of course, every year I feel like they keep adding more medication in, in to my body, you know? And I couldn't do all the things I used to do. Um, we used to play softball, we used to do a lot of activity. I couldn't climb stairs without my knees just killing me. Um, and so I, like over the years, I just stopped doing things, knowing I can't do that because my knees won't let me, or I can't use my hands like I used to. My hands would hurt so bad. I would, a bottle, Todd would have to open everything for me. He would have to lift all my luggage, do all my carrying for me, because um, <clears throat> it was just so painful to grasp anything. And there were, I mean, there were moments, I remember specifically, where just she couldn't get out of bed the pain was just so unbearable. And this was in the beginning before going to a doctor or anything, but I would have to help her out of bed, dress her, like she couldn't dress herself. Yeah. Um, just the pain was just unbearable. And so I remember those moments, it was like, this is just crazy, right? I couldn't believe, you know, after, you know, be, 
being together so long and doing all these different things together and experiencing all these different things and then all of a sudden this, this crippling pain that really just limited what she was able to do was was crazy well and as a husband how did you feel i felt honestly i felt like god why why does she why can't i take this because as a husband i feel like god has designed us in a way um to be able to almost carry more right uh, as as just as far as strength but i think god also knows that as men we would probably complain a lot more that's right right like <laughs> he know our wives can handle i think that's why our wives are the ones that give uh, childbirth and not yeah. us because there's no way we would be able to handle anything like that right <laughs> yeah but i felt like god why can't why can't i take this from her to see her have to go through that pain it, it, it hurt it hurt me so much it's like you know and i'll do anything for her i'll help her no matter what but to see her have to go through that it, it hurt my heart yeah. it hurt my heart to see all the pain that she was going through and even after receiving medication and stuff that's only that only is like a band-aid yeah it, it only covers for a little while yeah and then that pain just comes back and just to see that it it was hard it was hard to see it was hard to watch and, and we all know like our trip to come here was crazy yes um so we we're looking to come in 2020 yep. covid hits and everybody's life gets turned upside down um but really it's amazing how god can bring such beauty out of turmoil because who knows our mind wouldn't be in the same place 2020 um i wasn't at the place that i am now it's like, it's crazy. God had to break me. He had to mold me. He had to shape me throughout all of those years as well. You know, I got healed in 2020. Wow. So, like, not being able to come here, I went and met my spiritual father, and then I got healed of my citric acid for 15 years, which really caused me to believe in what God has spoken in his word about healing. Yes. Um, until that moment, I was still, like, on the fence. Is, is it the will of God? For us to be healed, I, just, I still was wrestling with that. Yeah. But when I experienced that breakthrough, you know, it also caused me to be at a different place in my heart. And so that delay for all of us, because I gave up my ticket, we didn't know if we we're all going to yeah. come. Yeah. It's been two years, yeah. <clears throat> you know, and I think it's not even necessarily the place, but your obedience. Okay, right. let's right. talk more about that. Like, you obeyed God. It's like God put something on your heart. Yeah you obeyed it tell me more about that i felt like i had i had to meet god at a certain place yes you know and god's with me all the time i know that but i felt like i had to build that faith and i and know that i know he's going to meet me here and every step of the way even before like a couple days before we got here my car broke down i was stranded on the side of the road wow and normally i'd be freaking out i'd be like i'm i give up i give up because there's so many things that led up to before coming here, you know, work issues that I've never had before, and just things that came up. I, mean, yeah. I was stranded on the side of the road. I was like, I'm, I'm done. I'm wow. giving up. I'm, I'm done. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I had to step out and tell people about my healing before yeah. coming here. I'm like, I'm going to be healed in Israel. Wow. Pray okay. for me. People that we know that wow. have our back. <laughs> I was like, I will be healed here, so pray for me. Join yeah. us in prayer. Yeah. <clears throat> and even a friend of ours texted us, okay, where are you at? You know, has she been healed yet? Because he's a friend of Todd's. And um, Todd texted him back, she's healed. My kids. Wow. I, I was like, you know, the, when, when I got healed, I texted my kids, because, you know, they're in, in, in the United States. And I don't know what time it is over there, so instead of calling them, I texted them. I'm like, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm believing and I'm knowing that I have to share with people yeah. right away <clears throat> excuse me, that I'm healed. Yeah. Wow, wow. And, and when you got here, we started having that conversation, which I think a lot of churches are very uncomfortable when, it, when the term deliverance comes. And um, there's been abuse behind that. Uh, people have made it uh, weird. Um, and then the churches, sometimes we, I, I guess I like to say that there's a difference between control and order. Sure. Like, God's order has to do with love, and control has to do with fear. Right. And I 
feel a lot of times that when it comes to things that the church feels like they can't control, um, then they become very afraid of it. Um, and deliverance is one of those things which is like Holy Spirit led and the Spirit of God comes and he just sets us free. Right. Yeah. You know, and uh, talk a little bit about that, like that, that thought process for both of you guys. You know, um, whenever I brought up even the term deliverance and yeah. what was going through your mind yeah. and all of that. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. so, yeah, so you start talking about that and, and you're right, you know, it, the church does kind of make it weird, right? Yeah. Or, or scary. Yeah. Like it's, you're this, you've got these demons inside of you and you, this possession that's going on inside of you. And, yeah. you know, it's like, really? How can I feel like I don't have that in me? Like, yeah. you know, like, what is that? And so you started talking about deliverance and I'm like, all right, that sounds a little weird. And I even asked you questions, yes. you know, when we were praying, uh, just because of the background and what, you know, I saw in the past or whatever yeah and what I can and I can't do or stuff like that and um, it's totally not that no right it's no. totally of God yeah right and the Holy Spirit <clears throat> yes and just inviting him into this place you know and revealing yes revealing to you what is going on what is holding me back yeah what is keeping us from our healing yeah right yeah. and yeah. allowing the Holy Spirit just to speak to you Yes. And the Holy Spirit is a comfort. Yeah, yeah. It's nothing yeah. to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, so not only hearing you describe it and talk about it, but seeing the process yeah. brought a whole new belief Jesus. to me about what deliverance is all about. Wow. It's not a scary thing. No. There's nothing to be afraid of. No. You're not this horrible demonic person. No. No. Right? <laughs> yeah. No. I did want to slap you. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, <clears throat> you're explaining, you know, about the oppression. And I'm like, so you're telling me I'm, I'm demon possessed. And I'm, I'm going to punch you because I know I'm not. Uh. Um, but when you explain the process, and even later, you know, before you prayed for me, I told Todd, my head starts spinning. You stop the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. I'm like, you stop it because I know that's not right. That's not okay. Um, but when you explain the process, when you said the word, of course I had fear. I'm like, I don't, I'm not familiar with that at all. Right. Yeah. I don't know that process. Yeah. I've seen people get delivered and set free and you can see it, but I didn't think I needed that. Yeah. I thought I was right. already set free. Yeah. But after going through the deliverance process and getting, you know, the Holy Spirit just like pushing it out of me, yeah. you know, like yeah. just pushing it out of me, um, it was not scary. It's, it wasn't scary at all. Yeah. yeah. As where I thought it's, it's going to, you know, I told Todd, you know, I needed him by my side. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, dude, you got to help me with this, you yeah. know, pray with me while I'm going through this. Um, because it sounds a lot scary and it's actually a lot more peaceful. Yeah. Then the words sounds like or the church portrayed Absolutely. deliverance Absolutely. or you know oppression. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was so much you could feel the one the presence of the Holy Spirit oh in goodness. that room. Yeah. Oh yeah. But also the peace, right? Yeah. Like it was so. Oh my gosh. Yeah, there was yeah. nothing weird about it. There was it was very peaceful. Yeah. And calming. Yeah. In that moment. You know, in Luke eleven verse twenty, the Pharisees actually get. Uh, mad at Jesus because he cast out devils and he said it's by devils he casts out devils um, and this is where he makes a famous statement like like every other sin is forgivable except for blaspheming the Holy Spirit you know and, <clears throat> and in Luke 11 verse 20 by verse 20 he says if I cast out devils by the finger of God in Matthew it says by the spirit of God know that the kingdom of God it, it is it is like a demonstration of God's kingdom yeah. Yeah. invading. So the kingdom of God came and invaded this place in that moment. Yeah. And I remember as we're so as we're going through deliverance, first we just want to make sure it's it's clear. We don't believe Christians could be possessed. Okay, we're three in one. Okay, just Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know when just like when uh, God spoke to Adam and said, "When you eat this, you'll die," but yet Adam did die died spiritually right. in that moment and the rest of him was left dying mm -hmm. so
So he was left with the soul that was dying and the flesh that was going to die. Right. In the same way, when we get sanctified, our spirit comes alive. It's justified. Our soul is being sanctified mm. and our body will be glorified. Yeah. Amen. And so there's this newness in you. Your spirit is new. Your soul is being renewed and your body will be new. Yeah. And it's in the in-between. So your spirit can never have a demonic spirit inside of it when you have the Lord dwelling in there. But your soul, the demonic spirits will come in there, mess with your cognition, volition, and emotion. Mm. And, and that's where the enemy had you captive, is in that moment, yes. um, in that place. And so as we started going through deliverance, I, didn't even, I wasn't even aware of everything. Because there was right. that moment where you went on your knees, the Lord spoke to you to go on your knees. I had no idea what happened. Yeah. Just explain to me. Oh, I'm... my goodness. So I haven't knelt in 15 to 18 years, especially without pain. So when they have altar calls, I, I can never, I feel like I can never go up to the altar because I can't kneel. My, my knees would be in so much pain and, and getting up, right. you know, my fear would be kneeling and nobody being around to help me up because I would not be able to do that on my own. Um, and so this pain and, and this just the, the inflammation um, stopped me from doing, you know, just kneeling before God. So the first prayer, and God told me, get on your knees. And I went flat on my knees, like, you know, not just kneeling. I wasn't kneeling. I was like on my knees. And I, I was like, and then I got up on my own, which I haven't done that either. You know, I haven't, like the old lady get up. And that was hard. Um, that was hard for me because my initial reaction was to help her down yeah. and to help her back up. That's crazy. But knowing that she felt that God was telling her, the Holy Spirit was telling her to get on her knees, I'm like, I'm not going to interfere in this, right? Because God is doing the work. Yes. And I don't want to be something that gets in the way of what is happening. Wow. So it was hard for me to hold back because that's my initial reaction is to help her down and to help her back up again. Wow. But then you got up and you sat back down. Yep. You know? And as we started uh, asking the Holy Spirit if there was any doors, the Holy Spirit started revealing to you just different things that had transpired in your life, mm -hmm. even things that people had caused to happen in your life. Right. Um, and I love it because the Spirit of God, He leads us to all truth. Yes. And so He just guided you to all the different truth, and He began to close all of those doors. Yeah. And anything that came in, He booted it out. Yeah. And then he shut the door, booted it out, like shut physically the door. booted out. Because like I felt this tingling in my knees, and I was, I think I was sharing that, yeah. um, that I felt a tingling in my knees, and then my hands, I felt the tingling in my hands, and my chest. Yes. Because I, I had a heart attack five years ago, and I had a quadruple bypass, and you know, again, the battlefield of the, my, my mind was like, I'm gonna die soon. You know, I'm not gonna live long. Yeah. Um, because you know, with all my ailments, but I had a heart attack, and, and during the deliverance, my chest tightened up and then released. So it was just amazing on how everything I could feel, physically feel, let go. Wow. And that's what the so in all the areas that you were feeling pain from your heart to your hands to your knees, and to watch everything like come out of those areas, yeah. right? All the areas where there was joint pain or heart pain or everything, everything came out of those areas. Wow. And that's what I feel like God revealed to me at that moment sitting there is like, you watch this and it's all coming from the areas of pain. Yeah. And it's all leaving. Wow. From those areas. It was wow. unbelievable to, to witness. Now there was, there was a moment, right, um, with the medication. I think this was a very powerful moment, um, revealing moment. Because I think the devil's very tricky. He, he's, yeah. If the Bible says he's a master deceiver, he is really great at it, you know? And I know I've believed so many lies, and I still have lies in my life. I know I believe, sure. you know? And yeah. the Holy Spirit is, like, revealing it to me. Now, explain a little bit more about that. Like, what happened with the medication, what your belief process was, and how God confronted that with truth and set you free from that. Oh, gosh. 
that again, I, I really felt the first prayer, I was done, right? I'm like, my knees feel great, I'm good. Thank God that that's not, thank God for you that you were like, we just started. I'm like, oh, okay. Just we're just that. getting started, yeah. And the final step, um, we were praying and and I, I was taking, I've been on sleeping pills, Ambien, for the last year and a half. But, you know, my mind is like, it's just one a night, just one a night. And I only needed it you know, as if I was stressed or whatever, I would take only one pill. The last year and a half, I've been taking a pill a night. Wow. And I thought, um, I thought I need this to sleep, to sleep good. And so I was dependent on that. Mm -hmm. And then I would add another sleeping aid to that um, sleeping pill. Cause then it would make me fall asleep quicker. Wow. You know, and I've convinced myself, this is healthy. You know, people do it all the time. But it was consuming my mind. That's mm. not healthy. It was consuming my mind. And I always, I kept telling Todd, you know, in case I'm so sick, I can't do this anymore, which in my mind, it happened a lot with my medication and my shots that I have to give myself my heart. Um, I go, I might take these sleeping pills yeah. so I can exit out in this world. Wow. And I thought it was just an exit plan. Yeah. And then you're like, well, that's, that's the spirit of suicide. I'm like, no, it's just an exit plan. Yeah. So I convinced myself that this is okay. Yeah. It's not suicidal. Yeah. But it is. It is. And some of the medication I would take would be so scary that Todd bought a gun um, because he moved to Texas and he's like, oh, everybody has a gun in Texas. Yeah. And I told him, and it, I still don't know where it's at. When we get home, he'll tell me. But yeah. I told him, don't tell me where that gun is. Wow. I said, please don't tell me where that gun is. Because I don't know, especially when I'm by myself, you know, my mind just goes to the exit plan. Yes. You know? And I would wake up every morning, back to the pills, I would wake up every morning, had a great night's sleep, I can't wait to take those pills again. Whoa. It was consuming my mind. So some people might be like, oh, you can take these pills, it's fine, the doctor prescribed it, he did. Yeah. And I only take one, one a night. Yeah. But when it's consuming my mind, that's not good. No. Oh, it's consuming my mind. And it was giving me an exit plan and when we prayed and i brought all the pills which i never bring i only so bring crazy. like 14 yeah. pills whatever she needs. Uh, yeah whatever yeah. i need and i i just dumped my whole bottle into my pill thing and i felt like god and nobody was telling me to do this you didn't tell me no nope. you didn't tell me no. but god is like you got to get rid of these pills and i thought that wouldn't be so hard but it was the hardest it's the hardest thing yeah and so i, I took those pills and we put them in a bag and I had some extras yeah and I'm like I can't find them yeah I can't find these extras you know oh, my God. little travel extras <laughs> and Glory's like well where do you think I'm like well like you know I put them in my purse I emptied out my purse and they're not, not there. there and Glory's like well let's check this bag yeah <laughs> put your hand in the in my bag Pulled yep. right pulls out pulled them out my oh, double my whammy goodness. sleeping pills <laughs> I'm like okay so let's put them in there and I'm like god I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sleep ever again yeah that's my thought you know my mind it, uh -huh. it had so much control over me I didn't right. know it Wow dumped those pills and that first night I, I was scared yeah I didn't I didn't think I'd be scared I thought my healing is done yeah oh my gosh it was a totally different healing yeah I was scared and I was up that whole night I was like Lord if I'm your child you love me that much then I'm delivered from this. Yeah. And then the second night, oh my gosh, I've had the greatest night sleep for ever the last, since. yeah, ever, ever since. since. And I haven't had to take a pill. The, those pills haven't consumed my thoughts. Wow. I, ha I don't wake up now thinking I can't wait for that next pill. Come on. It was horrible. Yeah. Those thoughts. It was painful because I don't, I don't want to have to deal with life anymore. Yeah. And I had my exit plan just in case. Wow. My suicide plan, just in case. Wow. I had no idea, because that word suicide never entered my mind. Right. Wow. But the exit plan did. Wow. And again, when you tell people of this world, yeah, they will say it's okay. You can take a pill. Yeah. You can do this. You can. Yeah. Melatonin's good. Another yeah. sleeping aid. Yeah. And that's fine. But when it consumes your thoughts, mm -hmm. and you depend on that to sleep at night. God can no longer use my dreams. He can no longer fill my body. I just shoved him out of the way yeah. and use these pills to think I have to live off of. Yeah. And for me, for me, that was, you know, 
I hated when you would you you would always bring it up like you know because my goal in life I want to live to be a hundred years old wow. as long as I can get around and I'm good and I don't need to depend on anybody I want to yeah. live to be a hundred I want to enjoy life to the fullest come right on, and on. I've always wanted her to be with me yeah and you know and I get it because of the pain I un I understand right I don't fully understand right. but I understand seeing it physically yeah. I understand. And she would always try to get me to agree, like, push me off a cliff. Let's go to the Grand Canyon. Just <laughs> push me off, oh, right? Yeah. Or, or here's the thing. At such an age, if I'm still going through this pain, I'm taking the sleeping pills, and that's going to be my out. Jesus. And for me, you know, we have a great marriage, yeah. a great marriage. And we love, you know, doing stuff like this, going to Israel, traveling, and, and just experiencing life, right? Yeah. And for me, that was always my desire is to do this together. Yeah. And for you to tell me that you want, there's an exit plan for you. It's like, that's not what my desire was in this marriage was to take you out, Wow. right? It yeah. was to enjoy this life. And the only way that we're leaving this place is when God himself says we're done. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. There's no other exit plan. And so that really, Man, it would always just hurt my heart whenever we would talk about that. Jesus. Because I'm like, I'm not okay with this. Yeah. Right? It was very, very hard. Yeah. Um, and so for me, that night, hearing her say that, like she needs to throw these away, was like, I think I was rejoicing more than anything at that moment. Because I'm like, And he didn't this just is throw them away in the hotel room, because I'm like following him to see where he's going to take these pills, you know? Yeah. Just in case. And we went outside. Yeah. And walk down the street, yeah. and I'm thinking, okay, just in case, I know where they're at, and put yeah. them in the trash can, like, in the street trash can, like, yeah. there's no way I'm going to dig through this <laughs> and get those back. Strategic. And it actually hurts my heart to say that you get it when I said, I have my exit plan that you get it. I obviously convinced him enough yeah. that it's okay yeah. for him to say, I get it, yeah. and um, we should never be there. Wow. Well, we... We, we thank God. Um, I want you guys to pray. Just look into that camera, yeah. and there's people which are going to be watching this. They're they're dealing with all sorts of stuff in their life, all sorts of pain, um, aches. Just be able to speak to them and pray for them, um, and declare healing over them. Yeah. I wanna I wanna read something. in a uh, couple scriptures that just come come to mind and uh, this one just came to mind and uh, I have another one that I read that I've just been I think God has brought to me in the last couple days but this one is in uh, and it's one of my favorites Hebrews 11 6 and it says without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek after him there is a reward from God if we will seek after him with all that we have not just a little bit we're not just gonna give him a little bit we're gonna give him all that we have and if we will believe faith I looked up the definition of faith and faith is simply this putting your complete trust and confidence in someone or something so putting your complete trust and confidence in God, knowing that there is a healing for you, there is deliverance from, for you, for whatever you're going through in this life. And then the other one I want to read is in Matthew. I want to say it's in 18. I could be wrong. Matthew 8, maybe. When it talks about where two or three are gathered. Right, is that 18? Matthew 18, I believe. But anyway, it talks, I believe it's Matthew 18. It says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Yeah. And that, when we were there praying that night, that is the scripture that, that God brought to my mind. Wow. You know, is that, because there was three of us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There was three of us there in agreement, in complete agreement, knowing that God was going to move on Ava's behalf that mm. night. That's right. And... It was, I, I just totally felt that, like, we, the three of us, were all in agreement. We had faith, yeah. knowing that God was going to do a work. 
and he did it. Yes. Because our faith came together, yeah. right? We were all in agreement for that to happen. Yeah. And so I just, I want you to know that that is possible That's for right. anybody. That's for right. anybody, not just anybody, you know, not just for certain people. God didn't say, okay, well, just for this group over here, for anybody who believes. That's right. Anybody who will put their faith, their complete trust and confidence in God, knowing that He is going to reward you for that. Yeah. But also, stand in agreement. Get in a group with two or three others and stand in agreement knowing that God has a healing for you today. Yes. But let's pray. That's right. Actually, I want to say something. Yeah, I, I just see somebody, I, and actually, since we've been on this trip, there's one person in my mind, and I have a feeling is anybody watching this, I feel this person is, is standing alone, and these bars, these ring of bars are wrapped around this person. And this person is just standing like this, so tight. But they're getting comfortable in that tightness. Mm. They're, they're in such deep sorrow and deep pain, but that pain is comforting them. Mm. And they can't move. And I feel that, that those bars need to be released. People need to share. I need help. I need to be released. I tell people around you yeah. in the name of Jesus, take these bars off of me. Yes. God, forgive me. Jesus. Use forgiveness in my life. Yes, God. To forgive other people. Yes, God. I need these bars taken off of me. Yes, God. Only God can release these bars because these bars are wrapped around you so tight. Yes, God. Your words and your belief and your forgiveness. God is in the midst of your forgiveness don't do it yourself god is in the midst of your forgiveness and god i ask for anybody watching this or anybody experience this right now yes god, god that they trust you they yes. believe in you they see the miracle yes. right before them they just have yes, to step out god. they just have to step out yes, into that Jesus. miracle into that water yes, god because you're there to meet them yes, yes god, but you god. cannot meet them when there's that roadblock when those bars yes. are wrapped around them you cannot meet them until their mind and their heart yes. is ready to, to speak those words. Yes. God, heal Jesus. me, forgive me, use me, yes. and release those bars. Yes, God. God, release those bars. Yes, yes. Heavenly Father, I just, I pray right now, God, for anyone watching who may be going through any sort of bondage, needs healing in their body, um, there's pain that they're dealing with. Maybe it's someone with RA, just like Ava, or who's had a heart attack and had bypass. Um, whatever that pain might be, Lord God, I pray right now, the three of us come into agreement yes. that God, there is healing right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, there is healing right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, and I Lord. pray that, Father, you would set them free. God, set them free of any bondage, the chains, the bars that Ava was talking about, Lord yes, God, that Lord. they would be broke, broken open, God. The, the bars would not hold them back any longer. The chains of bondage would set them free. Yes, and so, Father, I just pray right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, that God, you would do a great and mighty work. We yes, believe in God for you yes, God. to heal, to set people free. Yes, God. To set people free so they can live in complete healing and set free from the bondages that the enemy is trying to keep them in. That they will no longer have to live in that bondage, Father, but be able to experience the joy, the happiness, the freedom, the peace, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Yes, God. Just releasing everything in their lives, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We thank you so much for what you're doing and what you're about to do, God. We thank you for the healing that has taken place yes, in Ava's God. life. Yes, God. Just to be able to watch her these last few days doing things that she never would have done without any assistance or any aid. Jesus. God, we give you all the glory, all the honor, yes, and God. all the praise, God. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, that was the gospel with glory. Thank you guys for watching. Go out there and pray for people. Yes. God wants to see people set free. God is willing to heal yes he Amen. is Amen. he's willing and he wants to heal so go out there and pray for people pray for your family pray for your friends pray for yourself and we'll see you on the next episode of the gospel with glory love you guys god bless Woo! my gosh so that was so natural <laughs> <laughs>